So now that we've talked about what cloud computing is, what are the security concerns? Well, it's really kind of scary to an old school IT guy like myself because we're used to having all of our infrastructure managed in-house. Used to be if we were having an email problem, I could go walk to the email server. I knew exactly where it was and everything that might be a problem was contained in that one box. With cloud computing, I have no idea where it is even in the world. And in fact, it might be multiple different places in the world. I don't know if it's running Windows or Linux. Therefore, how do I know what vulnerabilities it might have? All of these are mysteries. If I were hosting my own email server, I could be like, well, I know I set up a firewall on it. I know it has all the latest patches. I'm monitoring it and auditing it. Therefore, it's as secure as it can be. But with cloud computing, you really don't know that. It takes a leap of faith. You have to trust that your cloud computing provider is doing a good job. With cloud computing, you also don't know how much processing power you really have. Now, we talked about how scalability is a benefit of cloud computing, and that is very true, but just how much can you grow? And even though they have an oversized infrastructure that multiple customers share, well, what if there's another customer and that customer is using a ton of power? Well, I'll tell you what can happen. Your service can be impacted. If there's another customer sharing your same infrastructure and they're having a huge product launch, everybody else can slow down. And there have been many times where this has happened. It's not only theoretically possible, but it happens in practice, um, especially when cloud computing was newer, say five, 10 years ago, this was extremely common. Nowadays, they've mostly gotten this under control. They've learned to throttle different processing capabilities and they build in service level guarantees into your contracts. So you don't really know how much processing power you have, but they give you a pretty solid idea. And nowadays, if one particular customer is using a large portion of the infrastructure, well, they throttle that customer instead of slowing everybody else down. Just because computing has advanced, operating systems have advanced, and now operating systems are designed to work with this sort of shared infrastructure. I'm talking about technologies like Hyper-V, which provide virtualization on top of the hardware. Another problem with cloud computing is you don't really know who can access your data. So sticking with the hosted email service, who can read your email? Well, you know your cloud computing provider can read it, right? Because they're receiving your messages, they're storing them, they're backing them up so they can restore them if there's a failure, and then they're forwarding them on. So they have your data. Now, are they going to read it? Is there a dude <laughs> working at your cloud computing service provider who's going to read that email that you just got from your wife? Probably not. They probably process so much they wouldn't bother even if they could. But I would hope that the service provider would have security measures in place to prevent day-to-day -day administrators from ever accessing your data. But that, again, that requires a little bit of a leap of faith, right? So you'll ask them and they'll say, no, they definitely can't. But theoretically they could, right? Somebody has physical access to these machines. Somebody has the ability to manage it. And we know they theoretically have to be able to read the data, process it to determine whether it's spam and forward it on. So you are outsourcing that. You have to trust that they either <laughs> don't care or that they implement security in such a way to prevent that anybody who might take a peek or a personal interest in your data from accessing it. So here are some questions you should ask yourself when you're signing on for a cloud computing service provider. Do you trust your service provider? Do they have a good history? Have they been around for a while? Do they have a reputation to protect? I think this might be the biggest component of whether you can trust them. I mean, you can look for different certifications and determine whether they meet regulatory requirements and you might have to legally do that. But I think the key to determining whether they're trustworthy or not is determining, well, do they have a strong track record? Have they been around for a while? What sort of security break-ins have they had in the past? And how have they handled it? I promise they've had some security break-ins, so you need to get them to fess up and show their incident response process. So all the cloud computing providers have had some sort of break-in and they've handled it in different ways. And I shouldn't just say break-in, I should also talk about outages because security is not just confidentiality and integrity, but security is also availability. So you need to assess whether they are a reliable service provider and how they've handled outages. Did they get it fixed really quick? Did they communicate with the customers? 
And to speak more to their reputation, you want to know that they're planning to be around for another 20, 30 years and that they're not exiting the business. Because if they're planning to be around, well, they're going to be willing to lose a few bucks to protect their long-term reputation. And if that means that there's a security compromise that requires them to spend millions of dollars to fix it, you want to know that it's going to be worth it to them to do that. You should ask yourself whether your cloud computing provider is responsive enough. Now, they will have service level guarantees in their contract if you get anything except a consumer level service. If you get a business level service, they will say, when you call, we will respond within 24 hours. Or maybe they'll say 30 minutes or two minutes. How much you pay is gonna determine how responsive they are. You just need to determine how responsive you need them to be for your own critical processes. And you will evaluate that in other lessons in this training course because we'll talk about things like disaster recovery and business continuance and you'll get to determine exactly how fast you need people to respond so that's something you're going to have to figure out before you can hire a cloud computing provider um, my next question here is can other customers access our data and you would think the answer would be automatically be no right <laughs> well it hasn't always been that way i would hope the answer would be no and i'm confident the cloud computing provider is going to tell you no but there have been cases where somebody was running their servers on a cloud infrastructure and another customer in the cloud infrastructure was able to see their stuff. Think of it this way. Most of these cloud computing companies use storage area networks. They have lots and lots of little blade servers, which are just a, a server with probably one processor and a little bit of memory, just racks of thousands of these things. They all connect to a storage area network, which is like a really fast network that just connects these blade processors to their hard drives. And they'll just be massive banks of hard drives. And they're configured for redundancy and performance and whatnot. Well, things can happen. Somebody can misconfigure it so that the portion of the data that's normally going to your processor goes to a different processor instead. And then they can see your data. This has happened. So this is a risk that you need to assess. Now, the risk of this is substantially less if you insource your own servers. If you put your server in your closet, nobody's going to accidentally get to your data, right? But you need to assess the overall security and cost. And as I discussed in other lessons, security isn't a matter of black and white. You need to decide how to get the most bang for your buck. It would certainly be more secure your confidentiality would certainly be higher if you stored your own data on your own server in your closet and you kept the door lock and you watch it all the time, but that could be cost prohibitive. And also because you're only one person, you might not be staying on top of every new hack that's coming out and making sure that the infrastructure is protected. That's a case where the economies of scale can help the cloud computing provider, but do assess the potential risk of data spilling over from one customer to another. As I described earlier, you need to assess whether other customers can impact your performance. And 10 years ago, cloud computing providers wouldn't be able to give you a good or honest answer to this question. I know because I interviewed a lot of them and I worked for some of them. And they would just kind of shrug and be like, oh, we have processes in place to make sure that doesn't happen. And then some customer would come along and they'd be busy and everything would shut down. That really happened all the time. But nowadays, the platforms themselves have matured some and they really can partition off a certain amount of memory storage and computing power uh, for individual customers and minimize the impact that customers have on each other, even though it is a shared infrastructure. Next question, do they meet your security and regulatory requirements? As you go through the process of designing your organization's security requirements, you're going to come up with a bunch of requirements. For example, you need a particular type of encryption. You need your data backed up every 12 hours because you can't handle losing more than 12 hours of data. You need it stored off-site more than 50 miles away. This will come through as part of the business continuance plan and disaster recovery plan that we'll be discussing in other lessons. Once you determine those, you need to make sure that your cloud computing provider meets your requirements. And some of them will, and some of them won't. And some cloud computing providers will meet your requirements, but it'll cost you a lot more than if you needed your data backed up less frequently. And the last question is an important one. Can you audit them? And trust me, I've been both the buyer and the seller of cloud computing services, and sometimes the salespeople will say things that aren't entirely technically true. <laughs> so it's really good if you can double check them. 
you want to make sure that you can restore a file. You want to make sure that if there is a disaster, they really will bring it up. So you might not be able to say, do a fire drill with them. You might not be able to unplug one of their data centers and make sure they can bring it up somewhere else. But you do need the ability to provide some sort of auditing whatever you need to be comfortable with it because ultimately you're the one who's going to pay the price if they don't do their job correctly. I'll add one more question here and that's what are the penalties if they screw up, if they don't meet their contract? Usually with service level guarantees they'll, they'll say something like if you delete a file accidentally we'll get it back online within 12 hours for you. Well what if they don't have the file? What if they what if they get it up in 24 hours or what if they can't ever get it back up? What happens to them? You want them to suffer. You also want some sort of financial payment to make up for your losses because you've lost something. So the way this is usually handled is with money. <laughs> They'll just say, oh, if we don't get your file back, well, we'll give you four free days of service. So they'll knock some portion of your monthly bill off. But that's something you need to determine. And you need to make sure they have what, what we call skin in the game. You need to make sure that they are financially motivated to meet the contract that they've signed because if there's not a penalty, guess what? They might just shrug and be like, I can't get the file. That would be hard and it's easier for me just to say no. So make sure that they have some penalties.